Hello and welcome to Eshe Music TV. My name is Simone Henry and what we do on Eshe Music TV is provide tips, tools, techniques, and resources to help you grow your music ministry. Today I have a treat for you. I have an interview with Donnell Josiah of Arc Studios. He is a wonderful producer and musician in his own right. Uh, he works with his wife and many other artists. And today we're going to talk to you about the process of recording your music, how what the whole process is, how it all gets done. And but before we get to that, we're going to play a song by an artist that I met this week at the Independent Gospel Artists Association Conference. His name is Ronald Quartz, and the song is called So Good.
and Henry. We have, I did an interview with Donnell Josiah, Josiah of Arc Studios here in the DMV. He works with some wonderful uh, Christian artists and from lots of different areas uh, around the, the country. And um, I went to him to ask him about the production process. How does it all work? And so, uh, so we sat down, down to, uh, to do that earlier. And now here is part one of that interview. And then we'll be back. Welcome, Donnell. Thank you so much for joining us on SHA Music TV. Um, <laughs> Glad to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And I can't wait to share with your listeners how we can um, provide some tips on recording and production and all the things that goes along with that. Wonderful. That's what we want to know about. Like, what are the what are the different stages in the process of of recording? Because a lot of people don't know. So, uh, will you share that with us? Absolutely. Well, in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually share with you six stages that I go through in my music production process that begins with conceptualization all the way down to mastering. Mm -hmm. So as we get into this um, program, I will outline for your listeners those six stages in two district two discrete parts. Wonderful. Okay, so let's get started. What's number one? First stage is the conceptualization stage. And what is conceptualization? Well, this is kind of where you begin the process, what we call melodic development. So if you're writing a song, what's involved in that song? Where is the melody taking you? What's the lyrical content of that song? How is the lyrics telling the story that makes the melody and the, con the lyric content come together? That's the first stage. The first stage is what we call conceptualizing the song, setting it up, because that's really important, because you want to make sure the song has the right cadence, the right beat structure. It also has the right lyrical content that, that you're hoping to convey as the song is produced and as the song is sung. Um, so lyrical content, some folks think of this as writing a poem, for example. In some cases, that may be true. Some songs start very poetically, but not all songs have to be rhythmed and rhymed as a poem is. Sometimes a song can be developed lyrically to take you on a journey on someone else's experience. So that's part of the first stage, taking that person from point A all the way to point B, all through the point C, and then having the music support the lyrics so that it conveys the highs, the lows, the joys, the sadness, any emotive element of the song that the music can then highlight, right? Once we have that part set up, then what I like to do is to sequence it. Still a part of the conceptualization phase. So sequencing is now me sitting down at the keyboard, at the piano, and beginning to lay out what the melody structure needs to look like to make that song come to life. That's the conceptualization phase. Once we complete the conceptualization phase, the second phase is what we call song sketching or development. Mm -hmm. Song sketching, um, this is kind of where you now sit with the artist, sit with the original composer, and you say, well, here's how I envision this song coming to life. I would then determine how long of an introduction do you want? Do you want an eight measure introduction? Do you want a two measure introduction, which is really short? Do you want an orchestral entrance? Do you want a really funky entrance? Do you want something that suspends? Um, whatever is needed to really convey the introduction of the song, to grab the a hold of the listener. Mm -hmm. and really taking them into the song, that's a part of the song sketching phase. In addition to that, it's also laying out the verses, the courses, the bridges, the pre-courses, the turnarounds, as they're called, um, or the coders. All of those elements of song pieces, song phases, where right? all of that is laid out in the sketching process. Because now we are looking at, well, how do I tie the verse to the course? What chord progressions do I want to use? Where do I want to inject silence? Where do I want to build? How do I envision the other instruments playing a part and telling their story? A guitar, an acoustic guitar, a piano, drums, percussion. How do they fit in into the entire grand scheme of things? And that's really where the instrument selection piece comes to bear. Because in instrument selection, now you're determining, in order to make this song come to life, I want to have a guitar intro. 
I want to hear the, 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 the fingers rubbing against the strings. I want to hear the flutes coming in. I want to hear the stride of a bass guitar. All of that now is what is involved in the instrument selection phase because now that's where you're starting to de define what the instrument structure for the song is going to look like. Okay. So now, yes, yes, yes. I have a question for you. So in this instrument selection phase, do you also decide whether those instruments are going, going to be electronic or live instruments? Absolutely. Well, what I determine is whether they're going to be electronic instruments, whether, whether they're going to be sampled instruments, or if they're going to be acoustic-based instruments. Okay. So, for example, for guitars, when I cut guitars, there's a way in which I record guitars that I don't want to use a guitar sample. When I record my foundation instruments, I don't use um, pre-programmed drums. So I'll hire a drummer and have that drummer come in and I will lay out for that drummer the entire song because now we have a formal sketch of the song. We have also established the beats per minute, which is the tempo of the song, how fast they're gonna go in the song. And if we need to adjust the tempo throughout the song, for example, we may say we're gonna start the song slowly, or we wanna fully crescendo for the second verse, or we wanna do something different for the bridge where you pick the tempo up a little bit. All of that is now part of the song sketching process because now you're what we, what we call, we're developing the meter for yeah. the song. So yeah. we're selecting the instruments, whether it's acoustic or electronic. And then after we, as we decided, then we now bring the other instruments in to build a foundation of the song. Okay. So the first stage was the conceptualization stage. Yeah. And that I talked about the melodic development, the, 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 the lyrical development. I also talked about um, the initial sequencing of the song. The second stage now is where I talked about the sketch and development of the song. Because the song begins to take legs. And in this case, we talk about song arrangement, we talk about the, the meeting programming, and we talk about the instrument selection. Those are the first two stages. The third stage is very important because now this is now where you bring everybody together. Mm -hmm. And this can be done in two ways because this third phase is multi tracking. Now, I'm assuming that for a multi-track song that you will have multiple instruments. There's some songs where a singer may say, I just want it to be piano and a voice. Mm -hmm. In that case, there's very little multi-tracking that's needed. Mm -hmm. But in the event that you need to have a full sound, full sound of the entire gamut of all the traditional type instruments, drums, bass, guitars, keyboards, pianos, etc., etc., then now we move into the multi-tracking stage. But what's involved in this stage? In this stage, there are two passes of this. The first pass is laying the foundation of the song. The foundation of the song is always going to be tied to your established meter, which is your click track. So the click track sets the tempo, mm -hmm. and he's going. Mm -hmm. Because remember the first stage before, we split it out the beats per minute, we scripted out the meter changes. So as the song builds, slows down, or if it stays consistent throughout the passage of the song, right? All of that is now scripted in the second phase. So the drummer comes in and he plays to that time signature, to that, to that meter that has been established. That's crucially important because everything hangs off of that. Everything hangs off of what the drummer is playing. Right. Now, the next thing after that would be the next foundational instrument, that is, would be the bass guitar. Okay, because by this time, the drummer has the melodic instruments that I've sketched out in the first stage. So we have at least established piano, drums, and now we're bringing the bottom in, which is the bass guitar. The bass guitar does two things. The bass guitar accentuates the rhythm that the drummer is playing, that's crucial because now the hits, the accents, the slides, the hammers on, all those feels that the bassist adds now complements like a glove, hand in hand, bringing together the drums, the bass, as what we now call the foundational instruments. Okay? Okay. That's crucially important because as they're doing that, all the other instruments that now come to play in that in, in that song mm -hmm. now have to recognize that they now have a place, whether it's horns, whether it's strings, whether it's um, acoustic guitar, whether it's rhythm guitar, whether it's an ensemble. Everything now must find its place in what we call the pocket of the song that the drums and the bass has just established. 
in this phase as well, we're also going to do something else. We're also going to do what we call MIDI um, editing. Now, what is a MIDI? MIDI? MIDI is Musical Information Digital Interface. And what that really is, Simone, it's allowing you to capture what's played on keyboards and other electronic equipment, capture that information in computer language. Okay. So you can then go back now and begin the process of editing and lining things up. Right okay. now, that's crucially important because if you're not aligned, all the other instruments will be misaligned. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So it's that's that's before it's all compressed and everything. Absolutely, you, absolutely. Everything is all separate, and you can kind of line everything up the way it's supposed to be. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Okay, it's fantastic. Yes, um, it's I am learning fantastic. so much. Um, we have to take a break now, though. Okay. We'll come back and we will go through the other, the last three parts of, of this process. Great. Okay. Great. So we'll be right back after this song. Great. Welcome back. This interview is so eye opening for me. There is so much that I didn't know about the production and recording process that happens in the studio. We'll get back to it after this song uh, called Love So Good by LRX. Oh, oh, come on, yeah, oh. Uh. Oh, 
Thank you so much, LRX, for that reminder that God is so good to us, no matter what, and that he loves us, no matter what. I think I recognize some of those streets that are in that video. They look like some streets that I've been, that I've been down uh, in Baltimore. Thank you for that reminder. We're going to go to the second part of my interview with Donnell Josiah and talk about the last three steps of the production process. So back to it. Okay, we're back. We're done now. We're going to go through. We've learned so much so far, and um, I'm so looking forward to the rest <laughs> of this process. So you were talking about multi-tracking, and so we're finishing up with that, and, um, and then we're going to go on to number four. There's one portion that we wanted to add to that was the vocal overdubs. That's also a part of the song because that's very when the lead important. comes in. That's, yeah. that's very important, right? Um, very but also anything that has vocal elements, whether it's a background vocal track mm. or a backing vocal track. And there are right. differences, although they're the same background vocals singing them. So the way in which you approach it, whether it's a backing track or a background vocal track mm. that couples with the lead track, all that is not part of the vocal development stage of multi-tracking. The remaining three stages now, now we're getting into the nuts and bolts now that the music has now come together because now we're now in the editing phase. Well, editing, is where you now begin the alignment processes okay. of making sure that each instrument is lined up first to the click track, or in this case, to the drum track, and making sure that as you're building and aligning all these pieces, all these musical elements together, and everything is in perfect cadence. That's really important. Um, a part of the editing phase as well, because now we have vocal elements, one important component, what we call pitch correction, oh. is really important. And for me, everything that I do, in, at least in the Archive the workflow, I always want to make sure that any vocal that gets recorded here gets sent out the best way we have captured it. Um, that's, that doesn't mean we're changing the vocal, but at least we're going to do a vocal analysis to see if there were elements within the vocal passages or the background stages that were sharp or flat, because you don't want to send that out, because you want to make sure that the music is perfectly aligned right? right the other thing is vocal region edits um now what is that now that's the technical term if you will mm -hmm. where we start working with you know digital audio workstation to start making sure things are you know lined up correctly mm -hmm. uh, making sure that for example if you're working in a, with midi sequence or if you're working with an, uh, with an audio sequence that the starting points are not abrupt that there are gentle entrances, um, and if there needs to be any crossfades between regions, that we establish those crossfades, because all of that is going to be important when you now consolidate the audio files, mm -hmm. because you want it to sound like one cohesive whole in your, in, in, in your music. But the most important one that happens in editing is what I call vocal comping, and that's C-O-M-P-I-N-G. Now, vocal comping is the process of building a composite track. A composite track is having the singer sing their best four, five, or six takes of the entire song from mm -hmm. beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And then going back very carefully mm. and identifying their very best takes yes. and creating a composite take, mm -hmm. right, from the various takes that they have actually made. Oh, wow. Once the mixing stage is done, which is the fourth stage, mm -hmm. then now we go into the mixing stage. Think of this like a chef. You got some, some Old Bay sauce, you got some salt, you got some pepper, you got all kind of different ingredients that you can bring into your, into your meal. It's the very same thing with music. Mixing stage now, this is where you're now looking at stereophonic alignment. Where does the instruments really fit? Lead vocal is straight up in the center, but the lead vocal should not clash with the snare drum, which is also straight up center, okay. right? 
Same thing, you basically. So there's some foundational instruments that would take some spaces in the mix, left, right, center, including the lead vocal track. The backing tracks, the BGV tracks, those can be those can be tastefully um, panned to the right and to the left. And you can even push them far with some plugins and some other tools for spatial separation. So all of that can be established in the mixing process. All of that is very important. Um, we also get into EQing, changing the tone or accentuating the foundational frequencies for the instruments that you're looking to make. Now we're going to the third phase, which is the mastering. mastering. This is the final stage where you have now brought all your pre-mastered mixes together. Mm -hmm. Now, in the mastering stage, one is not as long. A mixing stage could take you, take you days or weeks, depending on who the mixing engineer is. What is mastering? Well, mastering is the process of bringing cohesive gel to all the various pieces of music that was recorded as part of the entire record. So if you've had 10 songs and they were all recorded and mixed at different times, mm -hmm. the mastering process brings all those songs together so that when you listen back to the record, it sounds as if they were all done at the same time. Okay, so when you're when you're mastering, you're not mastering a song, you're mastering the whole album together. That is correct. That takes you into the second process, what we call the the sonic blending of the tracks. The sonic blending, which means that as I listen to song one, right? And I listen to how the, the overheads are sounding in song one. Right. Is this sounding too shrill? Is this sounding too bright? Is it sounding too dull? But I get a song too, and all of a sudden, my overheads stand out. That is the job of the mastering engineer, to bring those two elements, those two songs, so that they're closely aligned together in frequency, in tone, mm -hmm. so that they all sound like all relatives of each other on the record. You oh. don't want a song to sound like a foreign entity on the record. Wow. Right. Um, so that's the whole purpose of mastering. So in this phase, we talked about three distinct phases, the editing phase, mm -hmm. we talked about mixing phase, oh, and we talked about the mastering phase. Mastering. So when you bring all these portions together, so from conceptualization, right, when someone walks into your studio and they got a song, they got an idea they want to work on, the process that I go through, starting with conceptualization, moving into song sketching and development, then moving into multi-tracking, um, and then after that, we go into the editing, the mixing, and the mastering. Now, sometimes I outsource some services for, for example, if I'm working as a mixing engineer for a particular song, it's usually customary to have another mastering engineer master that work. Why? Because it brings additional perspective to the work. Mm -hmm. It also gives someone else the opportunity in critiquing the work and making, taking corrective action in a different environment. Because remember, if you're mixing with the same speakers and you're mastering on, you probably would not hear imperfections in your own setup. But when you outsource the mastering to someone else, then you're, especially a mastering house, their houses are already set up, they're EQ tuned, where they're flat, and they will be, they will be able to say, okay, here's where I think this song needs some tone sweetening, some adjustments, based upon what was produced in the initial mix stage. But also they can adjust things like making your masters loud, making sure that it is commercially ready, making sure that there is a commercial sheen that when all the songs are pulled together and it now goes out on, on vinyl or on CD or in MP3 or in Wave or it goes onto Spotify or iTunes or Google Play, where, whatever the platform that it comports to the standards of those various platforms. So okay. That is the job of the mastering engineer to make sure that that entire picture is, is created in that final stage of music development. Well, Donnell, you have shared so much with us today. I am so thankful to have you. We're going to have to have you back because obviously it sounds like there is so much more that goes into this. Um, and I have been taking notes. I hope my audience has. I'm going to tell everybody, take notes because this is good stuff, whether you've recorded before or, or not. Um, there's still so much to learn. So thank well, you thank so you much. We're going to have you back. Great, great. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Thank you so much, Donnell, for joining me on Eshe Music TV. 
Um, I took notes. I hope you all took notes and that you will, um, and if you didn't go, if you didn't take notes, feel free to rewind this video and watch it again. He gave us some really good information. That's it for the show today. I'm Simone Henry, and this is Eshe Music TV. We're going to go out with a song called Behold by C-W-E-N. See you next time. to be to be Thank you for watching SHA Music TV. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you never miss an episode. To receive the free gift mentioned in this episode or to have your song featured, please visit us at tv.shamusic.com.